Muy buenas tardes, siendo las 18 horas, les saluda el profesor Cristian Cristóful, coordinador del Departamento de Inglés del Instituto Superior de Lenguas, en calidad de moderador, y se da inicio a la defensa virtual de Tecina, acorde a la resolución número 841-2022, que indica fecha y hora de defensa de Tecina, a cargo del autor Samuel González, de la carrera de Lengua Inglesa del Instituto Superior de Lenguas, el día de hoy, lunes 12 de julio del 2022. En calidad de presidente del Tribunal Examinador, nos acompaña la profesora Valentina Canese. Muy buenas tardes, profesora. Buenas tardes, profesor. Y en calidad de miembros del tribula, Tribunal Examinador, las, los profesores Romina Bento e Iván Ramírez. Muy buenas tardes, profesores. Buenas tardes. Muy buenas tardes, queridos colegas. Y Samuel, te deseo muchos éxitos. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Entonces, um, la profesora Canese, que es la presidente, ella va a... Le vamos a dejar a ella el manejo del desarrollo de la defensa, entonces. Well, good evening, Samuel. Um, like uh, Mr. Um, Ramirez said, we wish you much um, success in your defense. You have 30 minutes to present your work to us. And after uh, those 30 minutes, we will have a few questions for you to answer. Uh, go ahead. Welcome, professors, to my presentation, whose name is Interpretation and Analysis of the Translation from English into Spanish of Five Poems by Gustavo Adolfo Becker, 1836-1870, known as Rimas. First of all, the introduction, statement of the problem. The statement of the problem is limits and advantages of using machine translation software for translating poetic works. Then the research purpose. The purpose of this research is to determine whether or not human translations are the only ones capable of conveying human emotions in poetic works such as Becker's, or if machine translation such as DeepL is also capable of doing so. First, there is a question here. What is more human than poetry? Poetry is the most human of all activities in artistic creation, which is its main purpose. Now the objective of the research, to undertake a comparative study of human and machine translations of poetry. Next, the research questions. The main question is, How do machine translation, Deep L, a human translation, Baker, comparing the translation of Becker's poetry, specifically regarding the preservation of the emotional messages, the key element here in the translation and analysis of the poems from Gustavo Adolfo Becker is emotions. And the secondary questions, letter A, To what extent are literary devices preserved in Baker's and Deep L's translations? Letter B. To what extent do Deep L's and Baker's translations respect the original meter in Baker's poetry? Letter C. How do changes in literary devices and meter affect the emotional message and overall feeling of the poem? Emotions, feelings, those are the aspects that are most important when conveying the essence of a poem from one language to another language. Now the review of the literature. This review of the literature is divided, is composed by three subsections. The first one is emotions. Experiencing poetry, emotions and human connection, ideas by Florence Cook. Romantic Poets, Nature, Religion, and Imaginative Escapism by Martinez Perez, Ideas. Love, Loneliness, and Becker's Lonely Love, Ideas by Vladimir Luarsavishvili, Isolation, 
Poetry as Therapy, Ideas by Kao and Jurovsky. Then linguistic elements of poetry, meter, rhythm, rhyme, syllables, and stanzas, Martha Sue Davies. Literary devices, Agnesa Krisnak. And the final one, translating, machines, humans, and poetry. Machine translation versus human translation, ideas and research by Philip Humble. And, and the last one, machines translating poetry, ideas by Taid Esa, and also her research. Experiencing poetry, emotions and human connection, Florence Cook. In the subjective sense of the word, poetry is not just choosing nice words. It is about conveying emotions. Becker used poetry to feel human connection and forget his loneliness. This is clearly seen in most of the rimas that present women as its main theme. For example, Gustavo Adolfo Becker wrote one rima that expresses that expresses how much Becker cared about the eyes, about the eyes of a woman. Porque tus ojos son verdes, tú te quejas, he said in that rhyme. He always had the eyes as an essential element of beauty in the rimas, in most of them, especially the first ones from the book Rimas y Leyendas. That's one historical and literary fact that is worth mentioning here. Romantic poets, nature, religion, and imaginative escapism, ideas by Martinez Perez. To Gustavo Adolfo, poetry was an ideal world, one in which he fulfilled his innermost desires. In Rima Forward, the poet mentions nature and religion as two sources of inspiration for poetry. Poems are based on mysteries, wonders, and extraordinary moments of human life. Poetry is based on the idea that there is still magic in the world, hidden marvels beyond the physical dimension of life. And poets, because they are lonely men, lonely women, through writing, they convey their desire, their intense longing for love. And by writing, they feel less lonely even though they have no physical companion. Next, Love, Loneliness, and Becker's Lonely Love, Vladimir Barsavishvili. In his poems, in his compositions, Gustavo Adolfo rejected real women. Instead, he preferred fictitious ones. I will say now to you two passages, two stanzas from Rima number 11. Yo soy ardiente, yo soy morena, yo soy el símbolo de la pasión. De ansia de voces, mi alma está llena. A mí me buscas, no es a ti, no. The first woman, the first woman that is rejected by Gustavo Adolfo Becker. Then the second stanza. Mis ojos son azules, mis trenzas son de oro. Yo puedo darte dicha sin fin. Yo de ternura guardo un tesoro. A mí me llamas. No, no es a ti. The second woman that is rejected by Becker. And the third one. Yo soy de polvo, yo soy de gas. Soy un fantasma sin forma. Yo soy incorpórea, soy intangible. Tú me amas a mí, oh mi amor, sí. In Rima 11, this is openly demonstrated by the poet when he chooses a figmental lady, 
the lady of the third stanza as the object of his love, ignoring the other two earthly women that were ready to truly love him. Then poetry as therapy, ideas and research by Kao Andurovsky. Research proved that reading or writing poetry helps mental health patients to respond to treatment and to reinterpret their emotions in a useful way. During their short-term or long-term recovery, the patients have shown that they experienced improvement or felt less worried or overthank or felt less worried or overwhelmed thanks to the poems they read or wrote. They can not only reinterpret their emotions by think more deeply about life and its real value. Most of these patients, for example, had suicide desires. And thanks to poetry, they discover the bravery of keep reading, of keep living, and the importance of being loved and express that feeling of love through poetry and also other values like friendship, companionship, and most of all, self-respect towards the others and to oneself. Respect above all. Rhythm, rhyme, syllables and stanzas. Martha Sue Davies. Meter is important in poetry because the words in a poetic composition create an exact rhythm throughout the piece, even with a mathematical precision. Regarding lines, Becker uses lines of various meters in his rimas, from two to 12 syllables. The predominant rhyme is assonant in the even numbered lines. For example, in rima 79, the first stanza says like this, goes like this. Una mujer me ha envenenado el alma, Otra mujer me ha envenenado el cuerpo. Ninguna de las dos vino a buscarme. Yo de ninguna de las dos me quejo. The second stanza. Como el mundo es redondo, el mundo gira. Si mañana girando, este veneno envenena a su vez. ¿Por qué acusarme yo? ¿Puedo dar más de lo que a mí me dieron? In the first stanza, de ninguna de las dos me quejo. It rhymes with cuerpo. That's an example. Besides, Gustavo Adolfo has different numbers of stanzas in this work, varying from just one to 20 stanzas in some of the pieces. In the rimas, both heptasyllabic and hendecasyllabic lines are the most employed. Heptasyllabic, seven syllables. Hendecasyllabic, 11 syllables, the most used. Literary devices, Agnesa Krisnak. The use of literary devices and figurative language are among the main aspects of a poetic text that makes it difficult to translate. They have an enormous weight in each rima. For example, in rima two, the poet compares his own path with the elements, tree, sea, wave, among others, path, a path with no destination, seeing himself and his life in them. Then in Rima 3, Gustavo Adolfo talks about the inspiration, and this poem leads to Becker's very inspirational origin. The core of his creativity, the fusion of reason and imagination, is a historical fact. The muse of his poems was a young lady named Elisa Guillén. No, not Elisa Guillén. Julia Espin, Julia Espin, that woman inspired his best rimas, but also he wrote in the poems that are from him about nature, about religion, about death, and about all, about all other things, loneliness. Finally, in Rima 5, the poet communicates the transcendental value of his poetic writing, which can travel the physical dimension of life, as I mentioned before, and go to the realm of the human soul. 
to the things that are not material, to the things that can be felt but, but not seen or touched. Machines, Humans and Poetry, Philip Humble, Maha Tahir Eza. According to Tahir Eza, both machine and human translations can translate poetry if both find suitable strategies for achieving this task. However, following Philip Humble, machine translation results are sometimes as acceptable as the ones made by human translators, even without the capacity of developing a strategy. Therefore, machine translation can render the meaning of poetry from one source language to another target language. That's an anticipated conclusion, but we're not in the conclusion yet. Methods, part one. Type of study, comparative analysis. Comparing multiple texts in order to assess two or more elements with certain characteristic traits. It made possible to analyze the ways in which Becker's rimas were translated from Spanish into English. Said, the research was undertaken as a digitally desk-based process between April 2021, the day I started, and February 2022, the day I ended the work, as a final thesis project of the National University of Asuncion's bachelor's degree. It took place during the global COVID-19 pandemic, the source of isolation and loneliness, which had detrimental effect on people's mental health. Methods part two, data collection. Primary data was produced from empirical process of selection, translation, comparison, and categorization. Secondary data was collected through articles, books, and other pieces of material that were equally useful. Data analysis. The first part of the procedure is related to the subjective experience of a poem. This relied on the human dimension of the researcher and the field, the emotions, images, the intention of a poem. The second one was based on the empirical measurement of variance and change in meter and literary devices. Results. Rima 79, as you heard from the poem I recited from the composition, loving from the most utter loneliness is an even more intense form of love. Machine translation result is quite like human translation result. There are notable differences in the translation of metaphor and imagery. The mirror pattern was not preserving either translation, human and machine. Rima 38. In this poem, Becker wonders about the fate of love once it is gone. Human translation was better in this task, but only marginally. Imagery stays the same in both translations. There was not a significant distortion in the poem's meter based on SPL, syllables per line transformation. The Rima 11 presents Becker's elaborated and intimate concept of idealized love by presenting two women that the poet rejects and one that is desired by him. Deep L's translation grasped the message better than Baker's translation. There are similarities and differences in how metaphors and imagery are translated, but the final words of the poem were translated better only by Deep L. The final, the real final words of this, of this piece is O oh, Ben Ben Tu, translated by Armand F. Baker as Oh, I want you, and by Deep L, Oh, come, come you. You see the comparison right there. Baker's translation did not maintain the mirror of the original piece. What is an apostrophe? Figure of speech used in Rima 38 and why Baker does use it. An apostrophe is a literary device in which the poet addresses an unreal being or entity without waiting for a response. In Rima 38, Baker employs the apostrophe for asking a young lady which exists in his mind both the fate of love at the end of a sentimental relationship, comparing love with its physical manifestations in the human body. What is an anadiplosis and why does Becker use it in Rima 11? An anadiplosis is a literary device in which the poet repeats the same word at the end of a preceding clause at the beginning of the other. Both repeated words are separated by a comma. Becker utilizes the anadiplosis in Rima 11 for emphasizing the idea 
or how much he desires to love the third woman in this moment, even though that she cannot and will not love him. What is imagery and why does Becker use it in Rima 79? Imagery is a figure of speech in which a vivid feeling, sensation, scene or image is conveyed through a rich choice of words by the poet. It is like painting with the words. In Rima 79, when Becker wrote, Si este veneno envenena a su vez, expressed the image of love as a poison that sickens both body and soul, not only of his, but of other people besides himself, with eloquent words that powerfully depict this thought. In both translations, Baker's and Deep L's, this figure of speech is successfully preserved in two different forms, in its turn by Deep L and Poisons Others by Baker. Conclusion. Firstly, in some instances, Baker's human translation proved in general to yield a more poetic translation in terms of the meter. Secondly, in other instances, Deep L's machine translation proved advantageous translated more faithfully and even more poetically. Thirdly, the similarities between Deep Ells and Baker's translations were abundant, as well as the differences which determined which translation was more efficient in its task. Finally, even though Deep L could not feel the poem the way a human translator could, he was able to translate the pieces in a way that kept the original emotions intact. In summary, Machine translation can translate poetry <clears throat> just as human <clears throat> translation can. And I will say goodbye to this presentation by reciting the Rima 53 by Gustavo Adolfo Becker, the parts I know. Volverán las oscuras golondrinas de tu balcón sus nidos a colgar y otra vez con el ala sus cristales jugando llamarán. Volverán del amor a tus oídos las palabras ardientes a sonar. Tu corazón de su profundo sueño tal vez despertará. Pero mudo, absorto y de rodillas, como se adora a Dios ante el altar, como yo te he querido, desengáñate. Así no te querrán. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samuel. Yes, please stop sharing. Um, well, first, I will ask uh, Ms. Bento to go ahead and start with the question section of this defense. Thank you, Ms. Kanese. Um, Samu, I have a question, and I'm sorry if it's written somewhere in your work, but I read it so long ago that I don't seem to recall it. But did you do any research on how uh, Deep L was developed as a tool? Deep L was developed in 2017 as a translation, a machine translation software with convolutional neural networks, first by a German company, and then it expanded to the whole world. And it's free. You can translate from any language to any other language, not only English, not only German, not only French, but all the languages that are really known. Is it an online platform? Yes. And it has also an app. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Good. So I'll give the microphone now to Mr. Ramirez. Hello, Samuel. Very amazing presentation. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, um, why do you choose uh, this uh, translation tool and not some others that might be more sophisticated. I chose Deep L because of its ability to translate all kinds of texts and especially poetry. It drew my attention the idea that Rima number 11, the last words were conveyed better by an emotionless machine translation software who could capture, which could capture the humanness of poetry it's, it was astounding to me, and I prefer Deep L rather than Google Translate or other kinds of machine translation platforms or softwares, uh, Professor Ramirez. Great, great answer. And what you said 
takes me that takes me to my next question and the last one. You said emotionless uh, machine. There are some research now that are that's investigating how and how accurate would be for um, artificial intelligence to not to translate poems but to actually write them. And right. Yes, to write poems. Um, and, and, and it's believed that it's not a matter of how, but when that's going to happen. So what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that poets can be dismissed. <laughs> can be dismissed if that would happen in the, in the near future. But seriously, it would be a great opportunity mm -hmm. to experiment with machines if they can share the virtues that human beings have share the inspirational creativity the core of the feelings that a poet can convey through writing if a machine can achieve that would be the greatest breakthrough of humankind i think good that's all for me so professor ganesa Thank you, Samuel. Um, first of all, before anything, I'd like to congratulate you on your work. Um, I, I am very proud um, of the fact that even though it took you, it was um, somewhat difficult for you to get to this point, um, you did a wonderful job with the thesis. And so my question for you to maybe share with the board would be what is the the main learning that you got from the whole process of doing this thesis to you what what was the main takeaway um, from this from this uh, process from this process I what did you learn the most okay i learned the most that as you can notice here it's important to develop the spoken English abilities. It's important because during this thesis defense, with all due respect, I experiment several problems when trying to convey, when trying to express, when trying to say my ideas that were previously written. And now I was attempting to condense in this presentation all what I feel, all what I thought and still think about poetry. And this is a message to all the students that, that are going to reach this point. Practice your, your spoken English abilities. And if you like poetry, recite them well, memorize them well. I try, I try to share with you the rhyme from the sparrows, La Rima de las Colondrinas, I reached three stanzas, but in general, it was a very beautiful, very beautiful poem. That's for the defense. I was uh, just completely honest. And, and for the work in general, my main learning is this one. Poetry is a form of artistic connection for most lonely people, but it's also the way in which a human being can rich maturity the literary creation can he can gather all the forces all the inspiration from his heart from his soul in a novel art in a novel way of composing all what is in his mind what is in his head and his spirit but in an elevated manner because all ways of writing are formal or informal or appropriate, but nothing is more elevated and more valuable than a person can, a person who can write a poem. The poet is a genius. He says in Rhyme 3 by Becker, tal es la razón, tal es la inspiración que me mueve. He says him, he said during his lifetime, la razón que me mueve es el amor por la poesía, por la pasión que se desprende de mí y puede colocarse en mis escritos. Those are the, the words from Gustavo Adolfo Becker. Poetry is the feeling of the soul. And there's nothing more beautiful about it. 
Well, thank you, Samuel. I will. I thank you for choosing such an interesting and such um, deep you know, topic and developing um, in a way that you can um, share your feelings and your and and you can convey these emotions. And just a note about the machine translation and maybe why it's able to convey these emotions. Machine translation actually works through. Uh, reading thousands and thousands of actual people's writings. So um, the machine, what does is just processes all those uh, ideas and emotions and then just reprocess them and, and and puts it together as a as a product. So maybe that's why machines can translate and then maybe later on we'll be able to write poems. But in my view, uh, in terms of your um, your prediction, poetry will never end because like you said, the, the poetry is for the poet more than for anybody else. So people are always going to keep writing poetry even if machines can also do them because, you know, um, I have a poet as a father and I know that um, poets cannot stop themselves from writing poetry. And um, unfortunately, I'm not as elevated and I'm, I don't talk in poetry, I don't write poetry, but I have a huge respect for poets in their art. So congratulations, um, Samuel. Um, I would ask you to please leave the room for a few minutes. We will deliberate and we will call you back when we're done. So you need to um, hang up the call for, and then Mr. Christopher will let you know through the WhatsApp to come back in. Okay, Professor, very good, thank you. Samuel? Yes. Congratulations on your defense. Uh, uh, you are now officially a new licenciado and you got a total grade of five. So we're very, very happy with you. Congratulations, double Thank congratulations. You. And uh, now you can move on with your life and go on to maybe write poetry, write music, become a translator yes. or uh, whatever it is that you want to do with your life. We are very, very, very happy with you and with your family. Um, please send our congratulations to your family as well. We know that they supported you very much in this process. And uh, we are very, very happy and uh, that you were able to defend your thesis and successfully um, pass this, this uh, part of your degree. Congratulations again. Thank you very much, Professor Canese. Thank you very much, Professor Cristofo, Professor Ramirez, Professor Vento. For one moment, I thought that uh, it was not going to make it. I was not going to make it, but the result is here. And I am extremely happy to hear it, to feel the moment right now. Thank you very much. Now you can write a poem about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I will send to Professor Christophe or, or to you. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, no problem, no problem. All right, let me close it then. I need to do it in Spanish. Eh, esto okay. ha sido entonces eh, la defensa de tesis del de flamante licenciado Samuel González, quien obtuvo la nota 5 en su defensa. Muchas felicidades, licenciado González. Perfecto. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Okay, let me stop recording and then we can